the Sky Striker deck has all these proactive spells. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the whole thing is, you know, my deck's full of spells, your deck is full of traps, which yeah. one of us is going to be able to do more things more often. Yeah, more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that we, we got this particular matchup, um, you know, with, with Walter playing, deciding to go with this deck, yeah. and, you know, straight away Young playing with those really heavy back row removal. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's going to be prevalent in a lot of these Sky Striker decks. Yeah, I... I I don't think I've seen that many. I, yeah, I no. looked through all of the deck lists. Jung's deck is yeah, the most well positioned in that way. Yeah, I'll, there's some other players playing cards like Mystical Space Typhoon, which is very yeah. popular in the OCD yes. Sky Striker decks. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a couple other Twin Twisters, but not not too much. I think he no. might be the only one with main deck evenly yeah. matched in the whole mm. tournament, but I could be uncertain. Yeah. I didn't even see that many evenly matched in the side decks. I don't mm. think it was oh, yeah, as yeah. popular as it seemed. Yeah, I yeah. expected that just to be the, almost a card of the weekend. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, maybe not oh. quite. So Walter Jewell got fairly unfortunate with that first matchup for him. Well, you got five rounds today, right? And we're going to cut to top eight later this afternoon. Yes. And after that, we're actually going to play the top eight matches tonight. Mm -hmm. Only the top four will go on to tomorrow. Yeah. So there is going to be a lot of dueling ahead for them. You only yeah, really absolutely. need to win three, though, right? A yeah. lot of people have won only three of their matches on mm. in the uh, Swiss rounds and then gone on to win the world championship. Oh, I was going to say top eight. <laughs> got a little eager there. Didn't make it that far. But yeah, hey, you're making the yeah, top three, eight. Yeah, three two is, is is a good enough record though. It's good it enough. depends heavily on your tiebreakers, but yeah, three three two gets you in, and it empowers you to take some risks that you couldn't take in an eighteen round tournament. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that's that's a really important point that John just made. That that the way you build a deck for an eighteen round YCS is completely different to the way that you build one for like a, you know. 10 rounds, 8 rounds, world championships. Yeah, it's only 8 rounds. 8, yeah. eight rounds gets you there to mm, win yeah. the whole thing. Now, that's that's half the number of rounds. Yeah. If you think about it, it's just, well, I just have to win 3 on day 1 and then 3 on day 2. Yeah. And I'm fine. It's yeah. just on day 2, you can't lose any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's still the same. You know, a similar thing with the top cut in, in YCS is just it's more back-to-back -back that you've got to win. Yeah. So the consistency factor of a deck can be way less at the world championships. And I think that's the thing. You've got to take a bit more risks. Yeah, just higher when power level, yeah. even if it's not necessarily the most consistent yeah. deck. You you got you got to pu push that bar up, of kind of making your own look for mm. for you know for playing here, or yeah. just play a completely different game from everybody else, like Ryan you did last year with yes. the Chainbird deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've seen that strategy successful in the past year. There was Frog FTK did that, right? Yep. There's been yep. several World Championships where we've seen duels do that mm -hmm. and just take their own sort of spin on things. I, I love the World Championship in that it's a smaller tournament, so you can make a more uh, like meta defined read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's harder, though, because you know that everybody else is just really, really good. Yeah. yeah. And trying to outthink people who are outthinking you yeah. at the same time. It's all those levels. It's very it's like what level you end up on, mm -hmm. hoping that, you know, even if you end up on level two and there's ten levels, maybe level two beats level eight and nine, so yeah. you're still fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you were just saying about the top eight, you know, players making the top eight and being, maybe being disappointed about their records. But, you know, mm -hmm. you, you are, you're playing, it's not like you're playing the opponents that you, you know you might play during the Swiss portion of a YCS. These guys are the players that you would be playing in the finals yes. of the YCS. Is the Every finals single round. of the WCQ. Yeah. Every single round, you've got to be playing to that caliber, which is, that's tough to do. It's grueling. Yeah. It really is. When you're playing a YCS, you, you, you begin that kind of, you know, you begin slowly. You, you kind of ramp up to that, you know, the, the, the extra theory. Those extra levels, you, you know, you step up gradually, but you got to you got to hit the ground running when you get here. You're playing against these people who, you know, Walter Jewell came second to the NEWCQ. That's that, that's you know that's not the kind of guy you you're expecting to play in round one. Well, we'll keep an eye on him and all the rest of our duelists as we progress throughout the day. Yeah, stay tuned. So next up, we have round two of Dragon Duel. Uh, oh yeah, straight into that. Just go right into <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, you, you don't need downtime, right? Yeah, I, I was I was wondering whether we were doing downtime or just not talking. No, I'm, no, I'm not we're sure. Dueling. It's well, dual time. It's dual time. Downtime. Okay, okay. It's well, it's like it's like re the clock. rephrase that. What, what time is it? Yeah, time what time to is duel? it? It's time exactly. to duel. Thanks. It's right. always time to duel. So <laughs> we yep. uh, we this have match we have uh, Yuto Kozima or Koizuma. Koizumi. Yeah, Koizumi. 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 Oh, okay, Koizumi. Sorry, uh, from Japan against it. James English, James English from New Zealand. So we got more Sky Strikers going on here, and I really like Yuto's deck. Yeah, we we uh, we picked this matchup on purpose because we really liked we really liked what Yuto uh, had to offer. So Yuto, so our uh, last Sky Striker duels was not using Darkest Diabolos. Mm. Yuto is, and he's also using Jura Ghetto in his deck to help facilitate it. 
Jorgo, if you don't know, it's a dark monster that you can special summon from your hand during the battle phase. Yeah. You gain life points, and then you can also tribute it off to give attack points to another one of your monsters. Yeah. It was big in uh, Arrow Mage for the two days that Arrow Mage was a thing. I, I, I feel like there was one other deck I remember seeing it being popular in, and I can't remember what it was. And it might have just been the OCG. It might have even been Necroz. Mm. Yeah. And I think we even saw it in Cosmo a little bit over here. A which not bit. for very long. Which card? Jiraghetto. 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 Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to make, it was definitely, definitely in like one of the top meta decks recently. I just can't well I, I think it, I think it was played maybe in the OCG Necros deck for a short period of time, but it just didn't Necros. end up doing much. Anyways. Oh yeah, because it, it um, which pack did it come out in? It was like it was Battle City. Battle City. Yeah, so yeah. The, I think it, they I think OCG got it before we them, did. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think it ever worked in the TCG. It was it was only in the OCG that it actually it actually worked. Well, it's great here for extra damage during your battle phase and then clearing itself out of your main monster zone so your Sky Striker cards work. Yeah. No Sky Striker cards yet, though, because James English is on Goki, yep. and, and he has opened quite well. Yep, he's popping yep. off. He has Firewall Dragon. He just <laughs> links summoned away the Goblin for uh, Nightmare Mermaid, and he's going to discard the uh, Divine Sword Phoenix Blade to activate its effect and trigger Firewall so he can special summon Twisk over from his hand, and now he'll be getting Ibley. So wh while we're seeing this divine performance happen, um, tell us a bit more about the Goki deck in general. What what makes it good in in Yu-Gi-Oh? So what which, uh, what Goki does depends on whether you're watching the TV show or playing in real life. Okay, the two are completely different things. On TV, it is a beatdown deck essentially mm -hmm. built around a monster that drains the attack points yeah. of your opponent's monsters and then protects itself using all of the cards you get. In real life, it is a true combo deck yeah where you start with nothing well you start with two cards basically two warriors that you could put on the field mm -hmm. and you end with six link monsters on the field yeah it's very similar to spiral in that it's two cards to start rather than uh double helix they have e-sold and then from there they combo off what would you say the key part of the combo is that the, pe the people who are really kind of watching this and saying well how's he how's he doing all this stuff what, what's the key part to know about this combo i think there's two uh, e-sold's a big one because it gets you to octa stretch by sending Divine Sword, so you have Divine Sword for all your Nightmare activations, right? In addition to being able to search rematch, which will then extend your combo. But the big one's Firewall Dragon. Yes. Yeah. Once Firewall Dragon's in play, you get so many free summons that it's really hard not to be, like, complete a full extra link. Yeah. So Firewall Dragon, whenever a monster leaves one of the zones it's pointing at, you get to special summon another one from your hand. Right. And all of the Goki monsters, whenever they get sent to the graveyard, you get a new Goki monster from your deck. Yeah, and English knows what he's doing. This is one. Of, this is a very fast Goki combo. Right yes, now. it absolutely. Yeah, yeah you check for the hand trap. No hand trap. All right, I'm I'm going. And he's also given uh, Ibley over to his opponent. So yeah. when Ibley is sent to the graveyard from your field, you can summon it to your opponent's field. Why would you want to do that? Because it stops them from special summoning other than link summons. Yeah. So they have to start with uh, a link one. And in this matchup in particular, well, as long as they don't have multi roll or something to get rid of it, it does keep them with a card in their main monster zone. Yeah. And this is the double mermaid variant of it. Mm. Wow, James is... Yeah, really his hand was very, very good. Yeah. Extremely good, yes. I get. One interesting thing that uh, Luke Parks spoke about, the European champion, that he was uh, he, he likes to add on an extra bit of the combo so that all of his zones are filled so that he can't be sphere moded, so mm. that the, the extra link can't be broken with sphere mode. I'm not certain. I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that I don't works exactly at all. How he does that? I wonder if you could enlighten me on how. Uh, well, it it doesn't work. You can all. So let's say you have five monsters, right? Yeah, you, you can, can always one, one in the main one and two. Oh, I wonder how. I wonder how he's doing that. Must have been. Must have been some way. Hmm. Now there are ways to stop them from hitting you with a kaiju, for example. Could have just been kaiju. So like, you can't special summon other than uh, Link Monsters, while Ibley's on your field, so yeah. he couldn't play a Kaiju there. But, uh, may Grand have been Rose Kaijus that I was monster. thinking of. Yeah, or may have been Kaijus. Summons. And then there's also uh, there's also variants of it that use Topologic Gumblar Dragon to just annihilate your opponent's hand before they get a chance to do much yeah. of anything. So it looks like uh, Koizumi has uh, Area Zeroed into a Jiroghetto, mm -hmm. and English is looking to find out what it does in his does, yes. in English, native English. English. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's a uh, very good one to read because it's basically it's kind of the defining card of Yudo's deck. Yeah, yeah. It's a linchpin into how his uh, Diabolus will be summoned mm -hmm. next to Ray. 
And just, this is just a way to get a lot of damage in, because we were just talking about how it's oh, a yeah. slow deck. Yeah. But you can uh, really kind of turbocharge it a bit with stuff like this. Yeah, big reason why we see uh, Pure Sky Striker be so successful in the OCG versus the TCG is that they have uh, ways to enable uh, high speed Rochambara and yes. yeah, Boral Sword Dragon. And so they're able to just sort of like crack out game the next turn, the same way Zodiac did, where you know they would have a turn one, and the next turn they would go into Gaga Samurai yeah. and just beat out the opponent. Chambara has been kind of. It's, it's always, I wouldn't say under the radar, but it's, it always seems to crop up in various decks, and it's always the thing that it's able to just add a bunch of damage onto whatever combo they're able mm. to do. Yeah, it was the big part of the World Championship winning deck last year, True Draco Dinosaur, and that was integral to a lot of their OTK combos. So the first Area Zero missed. He then activated Terraforming for a second one and was met with Droll and Lockbird. That was very unfortunate. It doesn't look too good for Izumi right now. Joel Lockhart still stops excavating, right? Uh, those cards are still considered in your yeah. deck. Yeah, so it does. So Juragento, if you don't know, it's during either player's battle step. You can special summon it, and if you do, you gain a thousand life. You can only use it once per turn. And then during either player's turn as a quick effect, you contribute it, target one of your monsters, and give it plus a thousand attack to the end of the next turn. And it's a level. It's a level four, isn't it? I think. I think. Level that, four. I think it was. That was key to the, to the, reason it was used. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to look that up. It's gonna eat away at me. Why? Why Jurgate? It was good. Well, hopefully, we'll uh, get to see an example of it. This is a tough spot for Koizumi because you can't even activate the uh, Sky Striker Area Zero's effect. It's mm -hmm. a card effect to add cards to his hand. Yeah. And there's not actually a random element to it. That's one of the uh, key distinctions on whether or not you can activate something while you're under that effect, or like how Stardust Dragon works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stardust Dragon doesn't work against Snipe Hunter because there's an actual random element mm -hmm. in rolling dice. Yeah. You may not destroy something if you don't roll correctly. I think uh, we're getting various translations here. Yeah, they may in fact be asking about that very things. If I can't add any cards to my hand, can I activate this at all? Yeah, I mean, James is sitting pre pretty pretty well here with the number of uh, Link monsters he's managed to get out so quickly. Yeah, the main effect of this, though, is to add cards to the hand, not to send the card to the graveyard. Explaining this to the duelist currently. Yep, and it looks like a concession from Koizumi. Yes, he did. Uh, when your opponent has seven monsters on the first turn, it's a little hard. It's a bit difficult, especially when all of yours get minus 2,000 from the two Nightmare Mermaids. Yeah. That's, a, that's a brutal yeah, that opening. Yeah, <laughs> that was a brutal opening. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think I saw anyone do the double night, uh, double Mermaid combo when we did coverage for the NAWCQ. No, I didn't yeah. see it either. I, I think that the Gohi combos are getting more intricate and even stronger, too. They really are. Yeah. So I believe I have the records here. These two are both 1-0 uh, and o in the Dragon Duel right now, playing on table two. Mm -hmm. so they are three points in. There are four rounds total of Swiss in Dragon Duel, followed by a cut to top eight. Mm -hmm. We will play those four Swiss rounds and the top eight round today. And then the semifinals and the finals will be tomorrow. Yep. So we're going to bring you uh, more of those rounds throughout the day. Awesome. James has got to be feeling pretty good at this point. Yeah, he's already won one round, and then now being able to just everything you know, went perfect. Shoot out the the Goki combo, the you know, through whatever hand traps. Mm -hmm. no, there weren't any. There, there's nothing then, there. You know, that's that's always a great feeling. Yeah, it really can't go uh, too much better than that. Although perhaps discarding your opponent's hand might be. Mm -hmm. And I note that he does have his uh, Gumblar Dragon in the side deck. Mm -hmm. I, I do wonder why they side deck that sometimes. So it's typically for the uh, Kaijus and Sphere modes because mm -hmm. you don't expect them until game two. Yeah. And so it get, it's better to summon that monster than some of the other Link monsters in your initial combo because the Trigate Wizard is just going to get answered by a Sphere mode. Right. So you yeah. just want the chance at discarding it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and they aren't main decking those cards, so that's why you bring it in post -board. Yeah. Okay. And I assume the same thing for evenly matched maybe as well. Yeah, but but it's, it's like really it. just the Kaiju. Yeah. I guess it's no, yeah, yeah, it's definitely not evenly matched because Trigate can still stop evenly matched. It's, right, it's just yeah. for the Kaiju and the specifically Sphere Mode. Yeah, when you don't know what you're facing, it's better to be able to negate anything, whereas Gumbla, you kind of know ahead of time that there's going to be stuff to negate, but 
Gumblaw is able to you know, get rid of those yeah. well ahead of time. Yeah, so I've, I always had enough extra, spa extra deck space to just main deck it, but I'm taking mm -hmm. a look at his extra deck here, and he has doubles on a whole lot of Nightmare Monsters. Yeah. So we saw the double Mermaid, which yeah. most players aren't even playing, let alone actually doing the combo to have mm -hmm. double Mermaid. But he's also got doubles on Cerberus, which is a, practically a staple at this point, because you yeah. use two. Yeah. Or, sorry, um, Goblin. Yes. He has Cerberus two of, which is a little interesting. Because normally, if you have a third Nightmare at two, it's Phoenix. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Cerberus is a pretty good one as well. It's definitely not bad. Yeah, <laughs> that nightmare monsters. Cerberus and Phoenix are quite powerful. Mm -hmm. They do everything you want. <laughs> they, they get rid of cards and protect your cards. Now, uh, Borolo Dragon is something that when I was looking through the NAWCQ deck list, there seemed to be a bit of a disagreement on whether to play Borolo Dragon at all. Really? Yes. A number of people did not. I, may, I, I will not say who, but a number of people that might be participating in this tournament did not. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Borrow Dragon. I think so I. I think it's one of the strongest cards, you know, one of the strongest Link monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with that. I think it's just the Goki game plan. A lot of the times you don't really need it. Yeah. Like, y your deck is so combo-centric that if you go off with your combo and you're able to end your board, they don't have the hand traps, it, you're, you're going to win without Borrow Low Dragon. So I think that's the big deciding factor. Essentially yeah. ignore any game where you might... Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because you're choosing like you're dedicating your strategy so much to combo and beating their hand traps and things like that. That's why we've seen a lot of them even take out more interaction to have more like extenders or things mm. to like push through, yeah. right? Like, oh, I'd rather have the Terror Top and then Takatom board in my deck yeah. than maybe Eagle Booster even, yeah, and things like that. That's so the thing that gets me with Goki though. Like, this is why I don't like playing Goki at all, and I probably just wouldn't ever bring it to a tournament. Mm. Yeah, is as soon as you get it up against another Goki deck. Well, now you have two decks that don't play against each other at all. They just no play. You you stick yeah. to your own plan. You don't actually do anything. Like you don't rely yeah, it doesn't on your opponent to break doing. the opponent's board. You can't break the opponent's board. You yeah. can't interact yeah. with them meaningfully. There's no. You can't really get an edge because yeah. at this point the Goki lists are so streamlined. Like yeah. what are you going to put in yeah. to get the edge of the opponent? And if somebody can figure that out at this event with I believe what 15, 15 players on Goki. Yeah, fifteen players on Goki. Fifteen total. If somebody can Across figure Dragon that Blue out, Island. yeah, combined. Yeah. Well, somebody can figure out you know, what the thing is to make the Goki, fa Goki mirror match favorable to themselves, mm -hmm. then they've got a very good shot. Yeah. Well, that's so. Some of the I, I know that Luke Parks is playing a, a strange version of mm -hmm. Goki, very strange, where he's planning to go second, and he's never even you know he, he's hoping to play a bunch more hand traps than than, than usual in mm -hmm. Goki. Um, and we may we may get to see that because it's not just him playing. I think uh, Gally is also playing it. Gally on his fourth world championship. On his fourth world him, championships, yeah. which yeah. I think is the most of anybody ever. Um, he might be tied with Shunsuke. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah. it is. Does Shunsuke fall. just have three? So Shunsuke lost in the finals in Italy. Yeah, I remember that. And then he was invited back the next year. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then he won that one and the next one. Okay, so he did play in so four. He's, yeah, yeah, so he's right now he's tied, yeah. tied with Gally. Yeah. Though uh, Sujimura, our uh, resident world champion. He noted in his uh, paper that he wanted to go on 20 consecutive world championship trips. And what is <laughs> aspirate? They asked him, you know, where do you think you're going to be in 20 years? And he said, hopefully playing in my 20th consecutive world championship. That's awesome. <laughs> that All right. Amazing. Yeah. We, we've seen a lot of different flavors of Goki's over the deck list. There's one yeah. Japanese list that I'm very excited about that I hope we get to feature later. Yeah. But yeah, it, I think it is a completely different twist than what everyone else mm. is doing. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Not going to spoil too much. Maybe a sneak peek, though. <laughs> So, as you said, uh, Engage is always a great start and a middle and an end to, uh, to a Sky Striker deck's repertoire of cards. And here we see Yuto starting with it. Yep. He's going to add Ray. Ray goes to the hand. And taking a look at his uh, side deck in there, he's got the Inspector Borders. Yeah. I, I usually yeah, see those play. coming he's against Alter guys, though. Yeah. Not, he's actually not played the, one uh, just now. Oh, but he did board them in. There you go. That's right there. It's because they only have one thing they can do anything about it. They have to draw by Scorpio, mm, or yeah. their deck doesn't go. They can't even headbat over it because that's a monster effect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Inspector Bottle looks fantastic. And he looks like he's actually in the brains, which is, which mm. is pretty cool. Maybe he could get like instant fusion to get a fusion monster on the field and then, and then do play a things. monster effect like that. Yeah, it's just it's a really nasty card, Inspector Border. Yeah. Can't play it if you have any other monsters on the field. And you can only activate the number of monster effects up to the number of special monster card types on the field, those being Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, Link. Oh, and he has the Scorpio. He's got the right Scorpio. He only has one in his deck, but he drew it. 
Wow, that's a bit of a miracle draw. That's, it's uh, that's quite fortunate for James. Yeah, it's a good day to be James English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially after that first game. <laughs> and sometimes it's just your day. We'll yeah. see if it's his. He's got to be feeling pretty good at this point. I mean, it looks like he doesn't have much more, though. I was going to say, I was just about to say. Yeah, Robbie, tell us, what, how much more can he extend from, from you know, getting over with this for Scorpio, though? It's hard because he commits his normal summon. Yeah. yeah. So usually a lot of your combo cards are things like Marauding Captain, or they'll play the uh, the Sky Striker spells, things like that. But junk forward. Yeah, no junk monsters. forward. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Instant Fusion yes. would be one, right? That, that would be the key extender there that he could use to keep going. But it, he didn't have it. Still, he's got rid of a considerable threat Yes, from yeah. Koizumi with no effort. Yeah. And I, I actually don't think it's that good, though, still. Because yeah. it, it's it's still just trading one for... It's still only a plus one against the Sky Striker deck where you're not trying to fight really card advantage, right? You're trying to just go off before they have a chance to really set up and control the game. Yeah. So I think that this still favors Koizumi. No, I agree. Yeah. It's just now he actually needs something right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he still needs interaction for the combo next turn. But... Yeah. But Yuto did. He had the engage right from the get-go anyway, so he knew he was going to be able to do something Sky Striker related this turn. Yeah. Uh, he has there with Kagari. I'm really interested as to what English's set card is. Because lo looking at his side deck, if it was... Oh, it might be... Impermanence? I, know, I feel like that's not a card you want to bring in this matchup. It could though. be Twin Twister. I feel like if he had it, though, he would have just Twin Twistered both aggro before some risk Scorpio. Mm -hmm. That way he guarantees yeah, clears. Point. Yeah. And then same thing with evenly matched. Like, if it was evenly matched, he would have just gunned yeah. it. Hmm. It, oh, it could be called by the grave. Oh, that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah, he could just take out that ray. Yeah, not the best right now, but it's yeah. still just something maybe. And oh, that's gets an afterburner. That's the beauty of Yu-Gi-Oh, though. When you put a face down in front of your opponent, they've suddenly got to start thinking about all these different things. What is it? What could it be? Could it be this? And then as they're playing, they're kind of taking out different things that they think it could be. This is this is a situation where the Juragetto would be really great. Mm. So, for example, if he had it right here, if you had the Juragato Diabolos, you could just win the game. Mm. Straight up. Mm. So you would attack the Juragato for 17, tribute it off to give Gagari you know, plus 1,000 in addition mm. to all the other stuff he has, and attack with that, and drop Diabolos, and attack with Diabolos. Yeah. Would that be enough for... You said Juragato is 17 base, right? Yeah. Diabolos is 28, or is he 3? 3,000. Three, so that's 47. So then the Sky Striker would need to be 33. That's a 33, lot, though. That's yeah. a lot. Well, she gets plus 1,000. So she's 25 at first. Yeah, and then yeah, she's 100 enough. for each spell. Yeah, is that right? Right. Yeah. So you had to be 8, eight so spells, it's a little spells. hard there. But you're that's right. That, it damage. allows you to crack out a yeah. ton of damage. So yeah. it basically gives you the ability to kill them on the second turn mm -hmm. if you've done damage once, which is still yeah. strong enough, I think. Yeah, or if they pay their life for something. Yeah. Yeah. That's still a lot of damage. It is. And it leaves, you know, a really big monster on the field that can't do yeah. a whole lot of damage. I guess if they play Instant Fusion, that's enough. Mm. And that's a, that's the one spell, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, you On Space and Aqua Dolphin. Asking for a translation of the Aqua Dolphin. I, I don't blame him because I'm not sure anybody's played that outside of, or actually in uh, Japan in ever. Yeah, they, they're <laughs> a big fan of the Magic Midbreaker. Yes. Still, yeah, more than the Aqua Dolphin. So this is basically used to fish out for hand trap monsters, not yeah. infinite impermanence. Yeah. So you discard a monster and look at your opponent's hand and choose a card from it, or choose a monster from it. If it has less attack points than Neospatian Aqua Dolphin, you destroy it and your opponent takes 500 damage. Otherwise, nothing happens, you take 500 instead. Yeah. Is it specifically Aqua Dolphin, or is it a monster you control? It's, yeah, it's a monster you control. Is it a monster pick. you control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you can actually take higher, but it's rare that you have the second monster. Yeah. But Aqua Dolphin is at that sweet spot of 600 that takes out all the hand traps. Yeah. Right. Well, they all have zero. I mean, There's one there. that it doesn't take out, though. It doesn't take out traps. Oh, no, it's Gamma. It doesn't be Gamma. Got, but, like, okay. you want to Gamma the Aqua Dolphin a lot of the time, I think. Actually, no, you probably just don't. You don't need to. I like a 600 matter to something, but maybe I'm just. I, I think it does. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it is now, though. Fekil 00, zero um, Ghost. All, all, all of the Ghost ones, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're what all about zero. Ash, Blo Ash Blossom? Is she zero? She's zero. Hmm. I want to say Max C, but that we didn't have that in TCG, so. Yeah, he's, a, he's got a little bit. A little bit of attack points. Yeah, it's 500. 500 by 200. Now that we know what Neospace and Aqua Dolphin does, 
was actually telling Oliver Oliver Wyman about the the impact of Aqua Dolphin this very morning. He was uh, he was very pleased with that. Yeah, he was quite excited about that. The WCQ as well. He signed a lot of Aqua Dolphin. Is, is he also Aqua Dolphin? He yes, is. he played the voice for Aqua Dolphin. So he, he does that's the Sonic cause some conflict, right? <laughs> because it's a Jaden card. If he's if he's Jaden's monster mm -hmm. and he has to beat himself as Astro Phoenix, like that's got a it's got a wear on a man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Living Fossil comes out next for James English. Revives one of your level four lowers. Oh, gets hit by another yeah, call, call by the grave, though. Mm. That's a nice trade. Mm. It's Octa Stretch, too. Does he have another? Yes, he does have another. Some people are uh, living dangerously with just one Octa Stretch. Yeah. James seems to be playing um, lots of different kind of uh, ratios. Just so you've been surprised quite a lot mm -hmm. about these different ratios. So one thing you always have to keep in mind with Goki is that each monster can only search once a turn. Yeah. And also, whatever you take out of your deck with Isolde can't be summoned that turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can't really use that second oct Octa Stretch in the combo. Other than to, um, well, sometimes you'll get it in your hand and then you'll summon it with Firewall and turn it into a uh, Link Rebo. I love the artwork for Living Fossil. I, I was just about to say the same thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's definitely like a traditional anime card style yeah. artwork. It's so Dark City, isn't it? It's in, another. In yeah, it kind of looks like it. I'm not. I'm not certain it's quite Dark City. Oh. It's another. Uh, it's another one of those GX cards. Yeah. Jamming oh. waves. We'll find out what that face down is. It, it was is called, it by, is the called by the grave, so it's going to hit that ray. Collectively, we were able to do the the process of figuring out what that back row was, based on when he. Used it. This is why oh, we're not playing. It. it takes three of us to do the, the processing <laughs> power of one regular duelist. Yep. Maybe <laughs> my respond to something. Or... No, he's already banished the ray. Maybe he's clarifying. I'm sure. Oh, he has three spells. He can uh, destroy the aqua ball. Oh, I I know what you're talking about. This is uh, whether or not chaining it. Prevents the second thing from working. Oh. And for that, we need the exact wording of the card. This is Jamming Waves. And Jamming Wave. I mean, why would it, though? Isn't the last thing that happens still the card getting destroyed at Chain Link 1? Well, it's a then effect. So if it doesn't destroy the first card, it can't take out the second card. And the question is for the targeting Oh, because it's set, right? Yeah, yes. never mind. Because the card stays uh, on the field until the end of the yes. chain, but the issue is that Jamming Ways only destroys set cards. Right. Right. And it's a uh, it's a destroy it, so it doesn't matter if it's flipped or okay, not. Yeah. And that is why Neospace and Aqua Dolphin has hit the graveyard. And the other big interaction with that type of card was that it was a Marksman. was the one that could only destroy set. Yeah, and then Landing if it was Marksman changed, has yeah. to stay set. Because Heavy Infantry was uh, face up. Mm -hmm. Sky Striker Engage drops next. So if it would say destroy that target, destroy it, that target, it that would has not work. to remain set. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And now he's gotten to his multi roll. Pretty key in keeping up the uh, Sky Striker flow of advantage. Yeah, yeah, well, it gets a draw off Engage too. So note that he's played Engage, I think now three times in a duel. <laughs> <laughs> like, once you get to three end gauges in a duel, you should probably well. win. Yeah. It's going well. And they're counting it up. See how many spells are there to get the extra attack points for Kagari. I believe it's four. And that makes her a 1900. Yeah, it's a reasonable number. What's James really looking for here to, to get back in this? Well, I haven't seen any... Have you seen any Widow Anchors yet? I don't believe no. I saw them, but we don't have a look at his hand there. Uh, generally speaking, I think James just... I mean, if he sided in the evenly matched, he could try to wipe him out one turn and then combo off next turn. Yeah. I think his ideal three cards to come back for this are Twin Twisters, discarding a monster, destroying both back row, and then soul charging back to Warriors. Yeah, that I, th works. I think I think that is the the dream scenario, because those backers are still going to be some form of interaction, even if they're not widow anchor. It's got to be something. He's used uh, two called. I believe Yudo has two called oh. by the grave already. Uh, it could be share ride. Share oh. ride would be a little rough if he hit that. Yeah. Oh, Koizumi is actually main deck in two copies of World Decree and evenly matched. This this is another Sky Striker deck that's just built to beat Alter Guys. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> There's instant fusion, so that's going to be one warrior, but. 
like we said, Kwazumi has quite a few back row. One of them set off multi-roll though, right? Maybe. I didn't quite catch it. I, I don't think he uh, played any spells. So he, the last spell he played was engage to get multi-roll. Okay, and then they just activate multi-roll and passed. Oh, so it's going to be tribute for bear hug. That's not ideal. Far from. Yeah, it is big though. James English is sporting a 70% uh, win ratio as well. Really good. Interesting. Really, really good. They are discussing. Discussing the number of spells. It's the attack points once again. Now we got a uh, good old Goki Bear Hug, which it's kind of a weird monster, even by Goki standards. <laughs> like most of them have some kind of uh, like they help you fight mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah, well, that's what uh, Go Onizuka is all about. Mm -hmm. So this one halves the attack of the monster, rather it becomes half of its original attack, mm. which adds a little bit of a layer of complication in this particular scenario. Yeah. Because it'll go to 750, but will not reapply the bonus. It was always quite an interesting thing uh, when I was judging about cards that freeze the attack versus cards that just reduce or change the attack. Yeah, the key to look for in the text for those is becomes. The attack becomes this. As opposed to this card you know, gains this or loses that. Yeah. So he's going to set an afterburners off of the multi roll during the end phase. Yeah, pure Sky Strikers, just all their cards are so powerful. Yeah, yeah. their grind game is unreal. Once you get three spells in the grave as well, they just do so much. That's the thing. He takes Widow Anchor, and I mean, you can just win with that right there. Another look at Bear Hug to see whether or not that's permanent. No, it's till the end of the turn. That's plenty of damage. It is. And they're just checking the math right there. 15 plus some number of spell cards. Yeah, it should be enough. Yeah, even without any spell cards, it's still... Yeah, even without... It's 39 minimum. Yeah, there we go. It? So, it's going to bring it back to 1-1 one, one here in our uh, first Dragon Duel yeah. feature match. We've got our first Game 3 of the weekend. I'm feeling pretty excited for that one. Yeah. So we've got to rearrange things just a little bit for uh, this last game. So James is probably going to go first, is mm -hmm. he not? Yeah. So I don't know that he's going to have... He's going to keep any of his... Hand trap type cards in. He's going to want to see a lot of engine cards. Yeah, I'm yeah. doubtful. But at the same time, it just depends what he plans to bring in, which there's not going to be too much that he no. actually wants, right? Like, Twin Twisters going first is okay, I guess. Like, you don't really want Red Reboot. You don't really want Evenly Matched. Infinite Impermanence, not the best. So it might just be swapping out some cards for Twin Twisters, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. So, like, you're probably just going to end up keeping in a couple. Of, like, Drone Lockbird is so good against Pure Sky Striker. Yes. That card is insanely powerful. Same thing with Ash Blossom, just cutting off a key card. And then I don't think there's... He doesn't really play any other hand traps, right? He's got a Reaper and Winter Cherries, but if you're going first, there's no... Yeah. They're never going to have more monsters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's in it. the side deck, though, right? Yeah. Like, as in cards to take out. He might oh, just okay. keep it his his clean 40, even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go I back to his original 40. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I actually don't think that he should be side decking anything. May, maybe Gumblar if he wants to play yeah. that card, but that, that's probably about it. No, nothing from the main deck, at least, in my opinion. Yeah. So he really wants to just maximize that capability of doing that huge combo that we saw in the first game. Yeah. I think it's interesting that uh, Koizumi has another copy of Afterburners mm. in his side deck. I think a lot of people just play one. Yeah. They're, that's it. They're fine with just one. But I kind of like having the extra removal there. Mm -hmm. One of the key features for Sky Striker for me is that you just keep two for one your opponent to death with those removal cards yeah. over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. And he's got, he's got even more removal. He's got Dark Hole in there. I yeah. haven't seen that a whole lot. So uh, Regeki is not allowed at this tournament, and it's, no. it is not allowed in uh, the OCG territories in Asia and Japan. Yeah. yeah. But Dark Hole's at one, so you can still play that. Yeah, just like Hoppy's Feather Dosta is also not allowed, because that's 
That's at one in the OCG. Well, yeah, that's an interesting card OCG. right there. What's that? Magical Contract Door. I actually Magical look that up. I do not remember what that card does. Yeah. Is that the one that lets you add a level eight dark? Is it a That's what I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, so maybe for Diabolus? That, that could be it. Give your opponent a spell card. That's that a was, spicy uh, tech. That was used mainly for Grinder Golem. Grinder, yeah. <laughs> Another little, card little we were Golem. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit more impactful in the OCG because they had a Security Dragon and Aka Shik Magician at the same time, right? Yeah. So they were able to just summon Grinder Golem well, an absurd well, number of times in the same duel. But While Jerome was able to look up the Magical Contract, uh, we're seeing here yeah. that James did indeed decide to go first. Uh, tell us what the Magical Contract is. So it, uh, you add a spell card from your hand to your opponent's to get a level 7 or 8 Dark Monster from your deck to your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. You give them a spell card? Yeah, you give wow, them a spell cool. card. It's interesting. It's from the movie, actually. It's uh, oh, really? one of Yugi's cards from Dark Side of Dimensions. Can you remember what spell card he gave to uh, to the Cubic guy? Mm. I don't, but when these things come up, it's always, almost always Monster Reborn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he might have given it to Kaiba. Oh, I yeah. I think he played in the Kaiba duel. Yeah. I remember the, uh, the the epic duel where Marek was taking over Joey and he like, handed him a red eyes back or something like that. That was a, that was another cool like, mm -hmm. moment, handing other cards over. Anyway, as we can see, James uh, starting with his solid here. Yeah, the one sacrifice that uh, Kuizumi has made by main decking the copies of Jerigato and yeah. Dark Steel Bulls is slimming a little bit on the hand traps. Because it's not, a lot of the hand traps are traditionally like, not too good against Alter Guys, not too good in the pure Sky Striker mirror, so he's trying to edge yeah. a little in that direction. He has Ghost Ogre for Easel, but we'll see if that's enough. Yeah, James. I feel like typically you're supposed to actually Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit the Firewall Dragon, right? Because it's still pretty easy for them to push through. As long as you can, as mm -hmm. long as they don't have enough uh, Oh enough yeah, we talked about this before. It. Yeah, right. At some point you might just have to use it against the, uh, the quick effect to add cards back to your hand. Yeah, yeah. Which is still not ideal because they still have cards back in their hand. Yeah. yeah. It's also how good your hand is, right? If your hand still isn't good enough to, after they use Firewall Dragon, you go so great, you can't deal with their board, then you probably just want it on Eastold anyway. Mm. But he's got the headbat there. Yeah, headbat allows him to keep pushing through. Yeah. So it all comes down to if James is able to continue his combo here. Looks like he, he I mean, he wouldn't have gone in with the headbat if he. Well, didn't he gets have something a certain match. So yeah. yeah, that's already four materials. Yep. So he's in business here. So that is the extra Nightmare Cerberus. The question here is, does Yuto have anything else oh, to be able to rematch in his hand? Yep, so he didn't even need to search it. Wow. Going to get back Headband and Octo Stretch. Now those have just searched. He's going to use the effect of the Divine Sword. Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. One of my favorite cards, in fact. It was in one of my favorite decks of all time. Goes a Nightmare Mermaid. You can activate that effect, discard that Divine Sword. Yeah, Divine Sword is just known for doing unfair things with discard effects, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, and he had Ghost Ogre and Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom takes out Nightmare Mermaid. Or doesn't take her out, but uh, stops her from summoning the Ibli. Stops that. Which might actually halt English in his tracks here, but we'll see exactly. I think he's considering summoning another Nightmare Monster. Maybe Goblin, actually. That's Goblin's it. probably... Oh, no, it's going to be Phoenix. Phoenix. Goes to Phoenix. And what's next after that, then? He's just co-linking them so that they are immune to, uh, I believe, card effects. It's card effects or battle. I get the two mixed up a lot. I think Phoenix is battle, but I might be wrong. It also means that his monsters will keep all their attack points, whereas Koizumi's will lose 1,000. Koizumi's going to start with jammings. Jamming Waves on the set card. Twin yeah, Twisters. Twin twister. that's, that's pretty big. That's huge. Oh, Engage gets Ash Blossom. I mean, Koizumi actually drew a lot of hand traps. He still has another copy of Ash Blossom in his hand. Both of these guys playing really quick now. Yeah. You can see that they were exchanging blows really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Things got real simple real fast. Yes, yes. <laughs> like the analogy I like to use is it's kind of like tennis. Mm -hmm. Where you try to serve as hard as you can and hit an ace every time, mm -hmm. but you know when that doesn't work, the other person their job is to volley it back yeah. and get things going back and forth. So that's generally how I see Goki versus other decks. You're just trying to hit that ball as hard as you possibly can in the corner. The other person's trying to run there and get it back. 
And now we see James going into beatdown mode here. Yep, taking a page from the anime. Yeah. Just an episode, just a clip. He's not getting a whole lot out of that uh, twist cover, though. No. It's a six. But this is, uh, this is the, you know, simplified game state. If you've ever yet to see one, and it just comes down to who's got the most damage as fast as possible. And right now, James English is looking pretty good. Now, we have yet to see if he'll do anything on his uh, main phase two, or if he wants to do anything on his main phase two. Mm. He's got immunity to battle right now. And he's got another back row. I wonder what that is. I mean, all bets are off now that we've seen the uh, the twin twisters. Yep. He's <laughs> he's up. Now, you thought you saw you. Thought you saw an ash blossom in there? Uh, in his hand, I thought I did, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think, think you I might be right. right. I just caught yeah. a glimpse. Yeah, same. So he's got, I think he's got ash blossom, one other monster, and then another card that I couldn't couldn't identify quickly enough. That's an evenly match. <laughs> that's the most that's important one, one, in fact. <laughs> wow. Yeah, if there's a card that can get him back in, that's the start. Yep. We'll use the Phoenix. Does he have Ray? I did. I thought I saw another monster. Um, no, it, it might be not. Diabolos. Or yeah. Jurigeto. Could be. If it's Jurigeto, yeah, that could be it as well. Phoenix is 19 or 16? 19. Yeah, not quite. He draws. Speed, Roid, Terror Top. Roy terror Top. <laughs> oh, he's going to get Ash Blossom. This drives me crazy. The one Terror Top, one to Ketamborg. Yeah, it's just I, because yeah, Instant it. Fusion. Instant yeah, Fusion yeah. allows you to enable Takatomborg, and then uh, once we see Cybernetic Horizon become legal Hayate, then it enables Takatomborg as well. Might see a bit of resurgence. Uh, the Speedroid engine actually got a little bit uh, better in Japan. They unrestricted. Uh, yeah, they put it at two. Yeah, semi limited. Yeah, Terra Top to two. So we see it a lot in Goki now. Terra Top is just one of those cards that is, it's so good. Yeah. And just in mean, everything. Yeah. Not just its own deck. Yeah. No, it it just does everything you want to. I remember even seeing in Necros because you'd search the one star tuner and make Herald of the Arc Light yeah. off of one card. You can actually see our spy on the ground, Matthew Bell, in the background there. With, uh, James English player cam. You can see him running around, gathering information. Afterburners takes out a nightmare, and uh, now we got something for. Yeah, that is Jurgetto. Uh, Jurgetto again. Yep. James is going to ask for an additional translation of that. So not, not that I blame him. <laughs> and Kozim gets some life points back on that one as well, which could matter. Mm. If this match goes the distance, he's, he's pretty short on those at the moment. So, mm -hmm. if that other card is Diabolosis, then oh, he needs another monster. Yeah, you can't tribute it without another monster on the field. Yeah, yeah. that if well, he he's also out that. of cards, right? That was his last card. Was that? His oh, last was it? Card? Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the last card was Ghetto Ghetto Ghetto. Diabolus. There Jericho are is also an awesome looking card. It is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, so cool. it's yeah, it's not like anime. It's like classic Yu-Gi-Oh more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That was in the first anime, wasn't it, Jurigeto? It was one of Bakura's monsters. Was it Bakura? I'm pretty sure it was Marek, wasn't it? Uh, yes. It was I'm one of the two. It was, it was, in Marek, duel. It was Marek yeah. or Bakura, but yeah. Because isn't this also... This is a Duel's Pack Battle City. I'm pretty yes. sure this is a Marek card. Yeah? yeah. I, I knew it was either either Marek or Bakura. Yeah. It's strange because his deck is so different between his duel with Bakura and his duel with Mai. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is the deck I was thinking of playing before the tournament, and mm -hmm. this is the deck I actually registered. <laughs> <laughs> Just strange because he beat my, and then I think this is I think it was the other way around. So he oh, plays Bakura first after he loses. Oh to yeah, Yugi. yeah. Oh, so that's, well, that's a good choice. Then he made a made a better choice uh, <laughs> in the actual tournament. Those last minute changes, guys. You know, Marek did it. Ooh. Just saying. It's called play testing. Reinforcement army. Excuse me. Oh, Reinforcement Super army X. off the block. Oh, oh no. Super X, Scorpio. He doesn't even need to. Oh, that's exactly that enough? enough. Wow. It's 18 over, I think it's 18 over 17 plus 23. That's it. Uh, yeah, you can see a smile cracking up. And there's the handshake. Yeah. Well, James English going up to 2-0, so pretty close. That was a tough fought uh, last game as well. Yeah. That's my, fa that's my favorite. Um, 
the way that, that Yu-Gi-Oh goes. Mm. One one game goes to one guy fairly easily, second game to the other guy, and then that last game, just, you know, real fight for it. Always always feels quite good. Yeah, the real that. challenge with Goki, if you're going to pilot in a big tournament, is knowing what to do when your combo doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. What, what your plan B is and your plan C, depending mm -hmm. on what hand traps and where they interact, the your your best way to move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I always found that Zodiac was the same. Actually, no, it wasn't Zodiac, it was Spiral. Spiral, Spiral was always... You know, there was it was very similar to you know your your tennis analogy. Big wrecking balls kind of hitting each other, and the best players were the ones who knew how to pick up the pieces and use those small resources they had left to actually bring out the game. Yeah, I think Spiral was even a little bit different though, because all the hand traps were so good against Spiral. Yeah, that usually they were just stopped every time and they went to beat down mode with Goki. I think you can actually push through a lot of them more often. Yes, especially because you have cards like rematch. Yeah, absolutely. Like rematch is huge. Yeah, yeah, tough, tough, and super agent. Were yeah, just, they're the kinds of caliber of cards that Goki just doesn't have. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Spiral eventually evolved into the going second deck, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was yeah. just trying to summon tough and going second. That way, you you're already better against hand traps. You already go up in cards. You already know what your opponent has. Yeah, it's good. That's a re that's a really good um, w way to look at. I think the comparison between Spiral and Goki. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's really good. Yeah, I think G Goki's. Uh, all, all of the they don't have any like really exceptional cards like Super Agent was. Mm -hmm. I think Spiral Resort, Resort Master as well. Plan. Yeah, like they the Spiral deck is just kind of a pi big pile of all stars compared yeah. to we're a bunch of big monsters that search things when we go to the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They have, I think yeah, all of the Goki cards have a really key mechanic that is. Don't get me wrong, it's really it's good, really strong. It's really strong, but the the Spiral cards all did something different that were all exceptional in their own way. Yeah, well, I I think that's an interesting way to describe it. How I would say is that it's because the Goki cards allow you to... St they, they're all about staying in the game, yeah. right? Like, mm. when you think they're out, they swap out, they tap in. Mm -hmm. And it's because when they go into that beatdown mode, they as long as one guy is destroyed, they're still just one card away from combo every time, right? Because every single one of their monsters can search another piece. And then they're, they're, they never need to shift gears in that way. Yeah. So while yeah, yeah, while Spiral like excelled in doing that, yeah. Goki Goki doesn't really need to switch gears. Yeah, it's always just one card away from comboing. Yeah. So how far away are we from seeing one duelist create the ultimate life form and actually just bring Goki Spiral? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think we're. I think we're a summon sorceress away, maybe. Summon sorceress away. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the linchpin, I think, when yeah. it comes to introducing Spiral into any tech. Well, she's say, gonna, she's got to stay away from this tournament. Not yeah. allowed here. If, if, if there's spandex under the super agent suit, then that would be very <laughs> impressive. You summon sorceress all the time. Oh no. All right, well, that was, uh, that was it for our round, um, our two rounds here. And we're going to be right back with, uh, with Duel Links, I think. All right, we'll yeah, tag so the boys in. Yeah, just like the cookies. <laughs>